I'm Serge Duncan. Welcome, Sergey, to Linear Rock. Thank you. And welcome back to Italy. So at age 44, uh, you find yourself working harder and harder, uh, writing poetry, touring, recording, uh, writing for musicals as well. Uh, you organize also social and political meetings. But when it comes to go back in the studio, you are a solo artist. I mean, it's been seven years That's since since the... Um, it's not true. Not true? Okay, so <laughs> let, let's discuss about this first. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have two albums that are collaborations coming out. Okay. One is called Jazz is Christ. All right. Uh, and I did that with three other artists, three other jazz artists. Yes. And I have another collaborative uh, record, which is also a visual presentation. Okay. It's a, a it's a concept record based on a British gangster story. Okay. And I did that with Jimmy Uren for Mindless Self Indulgence, and it's called Fucktronic. Okay. But I was. So I am a solo artist, but okay. I also do collaborations. But I was, you know, I was winning without the band. So, a system of. Oh, I am a band. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, since it's been seven years since the last System of a Down record. So, that's, that's, correct. that's what I was asking actually yeah. about, you know, the fact that you prefer. Six years. Yeah. Six. Okay. <laughs> six. Okay. I'm sorry. No problem. That's I'm doing fine. it on purpose. Okay. So, uh, you prefer to express yourself without the band at this point of your career? Um, <laughs> do I prefer to express myself without a band at this point of my career? You know, I don't know. I never thought of it that way. I, I made five System of a Down records. Yeah. This is my third solo record. Yes. Um, and I'm doing some other collaborative efforts, as I just uh, told sure. you. Besides that, I have a symphony called Orca that uh -huh. I'm putting out uh, under my name as well. So I'm doing many, many different things, and I'm enjoying it. Okay, good. Um, people expect or know you maybe more. I'm talking about fame, thing, you know, mm -hmm. as a rock guy. Uh, how does this affect the way you approach to writing new songs? It doesn't. At uh, all. I, I, wrote news, I, I write music based on the um, news that comes to me and based on whatever I'm feeling at the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't have other people's impressions in my mind when I'm creating or composing. Okay, great. So, Harakiri is the new record that you are presenting here today. A yes. uh, new solo album which is coming out in August, is that correct? Um, Harakiri is coming out in July. July, end of July? So it's Beginning like, of July. Okay. And um, you recorded that in Los Angeles? Uh, yes. And it was self produced? Correct. Um, it's a record which you show an extraordinary eclectism, as always, Thank as you. a composer, composer, and uh, also your typical intellectual honesty and freedom of thought. Thank you. Um, how would you introduce the record to our viewers? Harakiri is probably my, my most upbeat, straightforward rock record that I've made as a solo artist. Um, it's got uh, punk influences, it's got some 80s influences, three of the songs have some ethno-electro influences. Yeah. Um, it's eclectic, but it's very, it's still not, it's not eclectic like in Perfect Harmonies. It's a very much straightforward rock record with big anthems and big choruses and uh, yeah. So they should buy. I don't tell people what All to do. All right. <laughs> I don't tell people what to do. They should listen to it. <laughs> okay. And what do you mean when you say that this album was composed in a very tough period of your life? Um, not tough, but very busy period of my mm -hmm. life. I was. Uh, I, I started writing the record in January of 2011. Yeah. In 2011, I did. Uh, I released a musical, Prometheus Bound. So I was working in Boston on that. Um, I released uh, my second poetry book, Blaring Through Oblivion. I've done three continental tours with your uh, system all over the world, and some orchestral shows, yes. political events, and I've made four records, including Harakiri. So it was a very, very busy year, yeah. and I had no intention of writing a rock record last year. Okay. And uh, But in January of 2011, experiencing the massive, global, ominous, biblical event of the birds and fish dying, I wrote the first song just as an expression, mm -hmm. um, the title track, Harakiri, and then the rest of the songs just came to me. I was working on them on tour, in LA, in New Zealand, wherever I was, I was just working on them. And then by the near the end of the year, I finished 
the record um, and then finished mixing it early this year actually. And with all these things that you do, do you ever have time for holidays? Yes. Uh, like relax mentally and physically? Yep. <laughs> you I do? do. Yeah. How can you do that? <laughs> um, how can I do that? When I rest, I rest. Okay. When I'm working, I go 300 miles an hour. All right. That's a good point. <laughs> So after Imperfect Harmonies, now Arakiri, uh, which is a bit about uh, collective self-destruction, if I'm I correct. I like that statement. I'm okay. going to use it. Is that okay? Yes. self-destruction. <laughs> um, like seems that. that you live um, um, composing and recording as, a, in a sense, a suffering uh, experience of expression, um, a catharsis, in a sense, uh, Breathing space for you, is that a correct feeling that we have? Those were a lot of adjectives. Um, I'm still processing them. Okay. Um, this is more like a review than a, uh, <laughs> than a question, an interview question. <laughs> um, it's definitely a catharsis to a certain point, I think, yeah. Because the themes on Harakiri, the music's very kind of moving and, and, and um, even though at times it gets very heavy, it's very listenable because it's very light. But the themes are uh, really heavy yeah. lyrically, but artistically expressed. Okay. So it's it's again uh, pal palatable. Oh. Um, and you know, there's the funny stuff, the humorous stuff, there's the political stuff, the social stuff, eco a lot of ecological, um, climate change oriented, and man's reaction to it um, themes as well. And from your point of view, is there any hope in this world that we're living in right now? Uh, I'll answer it this way. Uh, an interviewer asked me blatantly, do you think it's the end of the world? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I almost said, and, and then I realized what I had just said. I said, no, it's the end of the world. Okay. And then I realized what I was saying is, uh, the word, the way that we define civilization, is by the way that they leave traces behind, the way that they, leave, you know, not just structures, but from cave drawings with early civilizations to manuscripts uh, later on to books later on and now digital yeah. books, you know. So the way that we trace the story of civilized man is through the word, through writing. So maybe it's the end of our word, but not the end of the world. Okay. Um. This time, uh, fire, birds, and fishes were the sparks of your inspiration. That's what I read. Uh, can you tell us more about it? Uh, sure. Uh, the, uh, the first song that I wrote for Harakiri, the title track, um, and the reason I decided to call it Harakiri, was based on that, if you remember back January 2011, yes. it happened in Italy, it happened in New Zealand, all over the US, South America, Within two, three weeks of each other, there were hundreds of thousands, if not a million, uh, uh, amount of bird and fish dying without anyone understanding why, uh, without explanations. The scientific explanations were kind of bogus, yeah. regional. Um, there still, has, to my knowledge, hasn't been a global kind of uh, integral research into a scientific explanation for why this may have happened. To me, it was very ominous. It was very emotional. Uh, I, I said to myself, why is this happening? What does this mean? It's like a big symbol, very... Yeah. And then a month later, if you remember, there was the Japanese uh, nuclear disaster and the tsunami. And the radioactivity in the oceans has risen yeah. since. And, you know, so I'm, my mind started tying everything together. And uh, it's, it's one of the primary reasons I call the record Harakiri. Is I like the Japanese term, that Japanese term, as a respectful way of talking about uh, leaving this place more so than the English word of suicide. Okay. Are you still a vegetarian? I'm a pescatarian. Okay. <laughs> um, your songs make people think with their own mind. Um, you actually... Can you think with someone else's mind? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you, you actually tell people to avoid, you know, to follow the flow, to, to follow ideological chains. Um, do you think that listening to punk was ever an, an, um, an influence in this sense. Um, think we're thinking about uh, bands like Bad Religion, Dead Kennedys, or Minor Treat, for example. Was yeah, yeah. that the influence in this direction? Um, 
I have listened to a good amount of punk and have been a fan of those bands as well as The Clash and many other bands. Um, and, and I think the kind of rebellious nature of punk is very uh, alive and well in today's society yeah. as a reaction to uh, ecological, uh, economic injustice around the world, whether it's in Europe or Occupy Movement in the US. And, you know, so I think it plays a, a, a good part in the record, but not as a direct um, link. In okay. other words, I wasn't listening to a lot of punk last okay. year before I made this. All right. I've listened to it over my life, you know. And your bass player, Mario Pagliarulo. Pagliarulo. Is, yeah, he's from the south Super of Super Mario. Yeah, Super Mario. He's from the south Napolitano. of Italy. Napolitano. Yeah. So what knowledge about Italian music did he share with you? We're curious about that. He, he, he's played me some stuff, but he hasn't pushed any Italian music on me. Not at all? Mm -hmm. Not even Italian rock music? We, we, push, we push espressos on each other more than music. Okay. <laughs> on tour, here's the thing you got to realize. On tour, we're so busy playing music yeah. that it's rare that we actually sit down and listen to music. Okay. And a lot of artists love listening to music on the bus. And after their shows, overnight and stuff, they blast the speakers. Me personally, no. I need quiet. Okay. I, you know, after playing for an hour and a half, two hours, listening to the opening band, you know, being at a radio station with music blaring. The last thing I want is, I just want silence. Silence is my music. Just ever. silence. So, so you, you just say silence? I mean, you only watch movies or... No, sometimes you watch movies, okay. you have a conversation, but, yeah. but no I just... No music? Not much. Yeah. Not after shows. Um, is that uh, something any different when you do something as a solo artist or any collaboration beside System of a Down than when you work with the band. Your approach is any different? Is it different having dinner with one group of friends than mm -hmm. another? Okay, so, but I mean you're much more in control, maybe, uh, is that what you're looking for or uh, it's just a matter of discovering something new. The, the primary difference between deciding whether something should be a collaborative effort or a non-collaborative effort is the kind of uh, the, uh, the completeness of the inspiration. Mm -hmm. If you have a vision for music or a record or a project idea that you know exactly how to develop from beginning to end, your vision is very strong. Yeah then it's best to do it on your own because you have the full thing already. Okay. You know, you just, and if you have the skills to develop it yourself, then do it. But if you have something that is, you know, very special, but is a piece of a puzzle, and you need other people's input for that puzzle, then it's best to find the right uh, uh, co contrarian parts to that puzzle to complete it, okay. whether it's with other collaborative artists or with system. You said that you composed this record on an iPod. No. I, I read about it. Is not correct? No, I said that three of the songs on the record were originally okay. sketched on an iPod. Okay, that's the correct thing. <laughs> okay. But what I was wondering is... Yes, you run for Italian Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> so is technology a big part of your life nowadays as it is for any of us? And, yeah. uh, uh, Sure. How do you leave that? I mean, you still maintain control, and uh, or they're taking. I mean, or the you robots know, are coming. <laughs> the robots are coming. Um, you know, uh, in our recording world today, technology is a big part of it. We use computers yeah. for recording a lot of different programs, audio recording programs, and uh, a lot of what we do is technologically involved. Yeah. Um, the, the instruments sometimes we play are electronic instruments, sometimes non. But uh, so it is a big part of, of our production process. Um, and do you think then the internet can be a strong weapon for minorities, maybe, uh, you know, that can change the course of world history? Uh, also, in this sense, the fact that, you know, everything is more open, everybody knows about each other. And so, also, people that had, you know, a different kind of life, which were more closed before. Um, um, to a certain degree, yeah, because yes and no about that. Because the yes part, the yes part is you look at uh, Twitter and Facebook being used in the Arab Spring and different types of revolt societies uh, revolting. Yeah. And you say, wow, they're using technology to communicate with each other and as a part of their revolution, if you yes. will. I take that term 
lightly right now. Um, and, uh, but on the other hand, you can say that during the Bush era, while we were attacking Iran, we had all the same information in the world mm -hmm. and the internet, and yet we were still duped, or America, or American citizens overall, were still duped into going into a war with false premises. So I, I think what I'm trying to say is there's information out there, but the, there is so much information out there that I think the filtration process is very important now for the truth. Okay. Last question. Armenian-American singer and songwriter, composer, multi-instrumentalist, record producer, poet, political activist. Which definition makes you more proud of yourself? Composer. Composer. Okay. And that's it. You don't want to comment any more on that. <laughs> oh, that's from Wikipedia. When, when, when they asked me to, uh, when they asked me to do a bio, and, and I'm like, I'm not going to do the bio. So yeah. I'm going to do the bio. And then someone, someone said, well, what should we list? And they sent me all this stuff, and I'm like, how did you figure this out? They said it's on your Wikipedia. I'm like, well, just copy Wikipedia and make it my bio. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, all of that. To be honest with you, composer, but artist really is the word. I okay. Don't, yeah. Composer is what I enjoy doing the most. Composing is my favorite part of what I do in my life. But I guess if you wrap all that up into one word, it would be artist. Artist. Okay. Thanks very much, Thank you. Sergio, for your time, and see you soon. Hopefully, you soon. playing live yes. in Italy again. Uh, looks like we're going to be back in October. We haven't firmed up the dates, but we're looking at dates to be in Europe and in Italy in October. Fantastic. And have a great tour with. System of a Down as well Thank you. in yeah, America, which weeks. is coming. Okay, that's right. With Deftones, correct? With Deftones, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, right. thanks very Ciao. much.